Hi everyone. Today, the famous person I'm going to present is a culminating figure of scientific revolution of the 17th century, whose name is Isaac Newton. He is an English physicist and mathematician. He is the supreme genius and most enigmatic character in the history of science. His three greatest discoveries, the theory of universal gravitation, the nature of white light, and calculus, are the reasons why he is considered such an important figure in the history of science. So, Newton was born on January 4th, 1963, in a village called Hulsthorpe in Lincolnshire in, in England. His nationality is England. He died in his sleep on March 31st, 1727, and he was buried in Westminster Abbey. So basically, Isaac Newton was the only son of his parents. His father's name was Isaac Newton, sir, and his mother's name was Hannah S. Koch. So his father was a wealthy and uneducated farmer who died three months before Newton was born. And he owned property and animals, which made him quite a wealthy man. But he was so uneducated that he was not even able to sign his own name. Deprived of a father before birth, Newton soon lost his mother as well for within two years of his father's death because she married a second time. Her husband, the world to do minister Barnabas Smith, left young Isaac with his maternal grandmother and then he moved to a neighboring village with his wife to raise a son and two daughters. So basically for nine years until the death of Barnabas Smith in 1653, Newton was effectively separated from his mother. So most of his childhood and teenage life and young age, he lived in the care of his maternal grandmother. Newton never married in his whole life and he had no children. So having never married, Newton spent his last years of life with his niece at Cranberry Park near Winchester of England. So now I'm going to talk about Newton's educational background. So here are some pictures of his educational institutions. Uh, and on the left side, here is the picture of King's School, where Newton studied from 1655 till 1659. And on the right side, here is a picture of Trinity College. And he studied there and he did his undergraduation there from 1661 till 1665 and he also did his masters from the same college he did masters from 1667 till 1668 and the picture of trinity college is uh, taken in our time so basically newton attended the king's school in grantham boarding with a local family. While he was a good student there, he showed none of the genius that he demonstrated later on. Near Grantham in Lincolnshire, where he attended the school, he entered Cambridge University in 1661, and an uncle urged him to attend at that university. And at Cambridge, Newton first learned mathematics. Even though his education was interrupted by a failed attempt to turn him into a farmer, he attended the school, then he went to the university. So basically nobody was able to interrupt his education. And Isaac Burrow, Newton's teacher at Cambridge, who made contributions to the fundamental theorem of calculus and who was also a competent and creative mathematician, he is the one who helped to raise Newton's interests. Newton also completed his undergraduate studies in 1665. It was the same year as the 
onset of the Great Plague in London. So consequently, he returned to Ulsthorpe. Then, uh, when it reopened after the plague, Newton returned to the Cambridge in 1667 again, and then he completed his master's degree and he received it in 1668. So now I'm going to talk about Newton's career. Newton was elected a fellow of Trinity College in 1667. In 1669, he became Cambridge Lucasian Professor of Mathematics. In 1669, Barrow resigned the Lucasian chair to turn to religion, and he recommended that Newton to be appointed in his place. Hence, Newton was the second to hold the Lucasian chair. And the current holder is Stephen Hawking right now. Newton was also elected to the Royal Society in 1672 and served as president from 1703 until his death. Newton then soon became as famous as a scientist mathematician can be, both among his peers and the general public due to his contributions and his talent. Uh, Newton was also elected to represent Cambridge in Parliament in 1689 and in 1696 Newton left Cambridge to live in London and to serve as warden of the Royal Mint. In 1699 he became the master of the Mint and he served capably in both positions even becoming wealthy but he seized any creative scientific or mathematical work when he left Cambridge, and in 1705, he was knighted by Queen Anne of England. So right now, let's see what are Newton's contributions to the field of physics. So as you know, Isaac Newton is well known for his discoveries in optics, white light composition, and mathematics calculus. It is his formulation of the three laws of motion, the basic principle of modern physics for which he is most famous. And from 1665 to 1667, Newton discovered the method of fluxions, the differential calculus, together with its applications to mechanics. It's the fact that integration is the inverse procedure to differentiation, hence the fundamental theorem of calculus, the composition of white light and also he started many of his other investigations. In 1668, Newton constructed the first reflecting telescope. Then in 1671, he was asked to give a demonstration of his telescope to the Royal Society of London. Then he published also his notes on objects for his peers. Moreover, in 1687, Newton published his masterpiece, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, with Halley's encouragement and financial support, which established the three laws of motion and the law of universal gravity. And Newton's three laws of motion state that every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force acts on it and the second one is force equals mass times acceleration and the third one is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction and here are some stamps that are issued in the honor of newton by grant britain so as you see there are four And here is one of the famous quotes of Newton. So the quote is, What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. So basically what this quote means is that we should always think that whatever we know, whatever we have knowledge is just so little because we have always a lot of things to learn to know from 
everywhere and from everyone. Because if we think like that, then we will be able to learn more. So here is the bibliography of the sources that I use to have all the informations. So that's all uh, uh, for my presentation for today. Thank you so much to all for listening to it. I hope you liked it. Thank you. Bye.